science had a particular commitment to the notion that there was something special about what they were doing, a special kind of thinking, a special kind of philosophy, a special kind of activity that was, in the most general sense, was thinking like a man. There is no magic lens. We have learned that science gives us a mirror, a reflection of nature, so that the laws of nature are in nature. We've learned that that picture of science just doesn't work, that it really is not a very good description of actually what happens, that what actually what happens is that the descriptions of nature, the theories of nature, are very complexly influenced by all kinds of social, cultural, psychological presuppositions. Language, I think, is the mediator of human values and human expectations into our descriptions of nature. And if we want to understand how science reflects, the ways in which science is reflecting back to us particular expectations, particular values, we have to understand, we have to, we have to look at the language of science and see how that works, how the traffic between ordinary and technical language works as a carrier of, if you will, of ideology into science. The language of sex and the language of gender have been extremely prominent in scientific discourse since the scientific revolution. The central metaphor for the scientific revolution was a marriage between mind and nature that was modeled on a particular kind of marriage, a patriarchal marriage, the purpose of which was the domination of the bride nature.